your bombing like a bomb with giant man kuna baadhi ya wasanii kutoka nchini Marekani wamewa ku take advantage kujihusisha kuwa wako namna moja ama nyingine wameweza kufungua milango kwa wasanii wa Africa for instance David O Whiskey ama Bana Boy kuweza kuzingatiwa kwenye soko hilo la Marekani yani wao wamekuwa na mchango mkubwa sana kwa kuhakikisha marriage za wasanii hao kwa nchini Marekani wanazingatiwa pakubwa sana Akon mara kadhaa kwenye interviews mbalimbali amekuwa akizungumzia impact yake ambayo amekuwa nao kupitia Cambet Music Africa ambayo alidai tangu mwanzo kuwa yeye ndio mtu wa mwanzo kuja Africa kwa sign wasanii kama Whiskey ushirikiano wake na wasanii hawa pia Bana Boy Davido, Mr. Easy na wengine and funao pia Swiss Beat amekuja na hili. Kuna hii interview kwanza ni la test interview ambayo mtayoshaji huyu wa kimuziki Swiss Beat alifanywa kupitia kipindi cha Amazon Music Rotation Round Tables pamoja na Speed Moman hao ni host na Was Mon, Rob McMahon pamoja na Jeb P ambapo kwenye interview hii Swiss Beat akaweka wazi ya kuwa Bana Boy na Whiskey ni wasanii ambao aliwatambulisha kwenye soko la kimuziki kwa nchini Marekani. Swiss Beat kwenye hapo mjiano aliambiwa na mmoja ya host ya kuwa. Umesema kuwa ulikuwa kwenye ndege and then ulikuwa kielekea Ghana Africa na hapo ndipo kaanza kuvutwa na muziki wa Afrobeat and papo hapo. Swiss Beat akamjibu kusema kuwa yes, mimi ndo ni my introduce Whiskey pamoja na Bana Boy Marekani. Ni kwa mtu kwanza kucheza kazi ya kimuziki mimi pamoja na mke wangu kimanisha Aisha Kiers nyimbo za Whiskey kipindi ambacho tulikuwa tukielekea Ghana na pia mimi ndio mtu kwanza kumleta Bana Boy Marekani and by then alikuwa amevalia bandana ya Rough Riders so nikamo introduce on stage na hata nipo kwa nikicheza kazi ya kimuziki za Fela Kuti watu kadhani kuwa nimeanza kuwa na Africa lakini nadhani hiyo ilikuwa tu ni energy ya kipuzi sikutaka kuachana hili kabisa katika kupush muziki wa Afrobeat kwa sababu nilijua kuna kitu kinakuja huko mbeleni na ni maswala tu ya uelimishwaji na hatuwezi kusitishwa ama kuogopeshwa na watu ambao wana uelewa katika masuala ya kuwa pofahamu katika masuala kuelewa kitu fulani hasa kukupatia sound ambayo ni kitu tofauti kimaanisha muziki huu wa Afrobeat Swiss Beat akamaliza kwa kusema kuwa kwa sasa kila mmoja ana uhuru wa kimaamuzi hasa kwa kuamua ni kitu gani ambacho anakipenda zaidi. Sasa ukiacha na Swiss Beat, Adu Sope huyu ni mmoja kati ya watu ambao ni prominent sana, prominent figure kwa nchini Nigeria. Na pia kwenye kuna sekwa Instagram alishare hiki ni kipande cha interview ambacho Akon alifanywa kwa mwaka 2022 na hapa Akon akawa anazungumza the way ambavyo yeye mwenyewe kwa nafasi yake amechukua nafasi kupeleka muziki wa Afrobeat nje hasa kwenye soko la nchini Marekani na kwenye interview hii Akon anasikika kisema kuwa ni mtu kwanza kumsign msanii Whiskey tangu mwaka wa na nane kupitia Convex Music Africa na kuwa baada ya kombe la dunia alijaribu kuangalia ni kwa namna gani anaweza kuwa papush wasanii wa Afrika kwenye soko la Marekani and by then muziki huo ulikuwa tu catch one ulikuwa ni uki Africa zaidi so akaamua ku change kutoka kwenye Afrobeat mpaka kwenye Afropop na Akaeleza pia undani wa ushirikiano kati yake na msanii Whiskey na kusema kuwa alifanya naye kazi pakubwa sana tangu mwaka huo 2008 kisha akaanza kufanya kazi na Pesquare and by then anasema kuwa Pesquare alikuwa ni wasanii wa moto na Whiskey alikuwa ni msanii ambaye ni solo and soko pekee la muziki ambao ulikuwa likitegemea kwa Africa na YouTube and Audio Mac soko nafasi yake alihakikisha msanii kama Whiskey anapenetrate kwenye soko kubwa la kimuziki kama ambavyo yupo sasa licha kuwa hayupo tena Cambridge Music Africa lakini umekuwa na ushirikiano wa hapa na pale kwenye masuala mazima ya kimuziki sasa kauli kama hizi wanaijua ya maonesha kama kutokufurahishwa na kusema kuwa ni kama Akon anapitiliza sasa yani ni kama anajipendelea zaidi kwani msanii Whiskey kwa mwaka 2008 alikuwa bado hata hajatoboa kwenye muziki kwani by then alitambulishwa na msanii Emai Abaga kwenye moja album ambayo alimshirikisha then kuwa sign na Bank W chini ya EMA so maisha yake ya kimuziki yakaanza rasmi lakini ushirikiano wa Akon ulikuja kutokea mwaka 2012 kwenda mbele sio mwaka 2008 ambako Mr. Whiskey alikuwa from the scratch yani afahamiki kwa lolote na kuonesha kuwa watu wamempinga hata mastaa wenye majina makubwa kama Don Jazzy mwenye kuja kushangazwa na hiki Bien DJ Bing na wengine ambao wamempinga msanii Akon kujipendelea kudai kwa kwa namna moja ama nyingine ameweza kuwasaidia wasanii kama Whiskey kupenda trade kwenye soko la kimuziki kwa nchini Marekani hata interview ya Swiss Beat baada ya kuchukua nafasi Uni Son Music Publishing Nigeria ni mmoja wa viongozi wa kampuni ya Son kwa Nigeria anaitwa Golden Tom kupitia Twitter akaamua kuja kumjibu Swiss Beat na kudai kuwa ni rapper Emma Yabaga ambaye alifungulia milango Whiskey kupitia single inaitwa Talk About It 
na hapo ndipo kwa sign na Bank W lakini pia kutulia msisizo kuwa kila kitu ambacho tunakiona kwa sasa wasanii wa Africa wamekipambania wao wenyewe na wajitahidi ama wa Africa wenyewe wasije tasku moja kabadilisha kwa hii narration ambayo kwa sasa imeza kutengenezwa na wasanii nchini Marekani kusema kuwa wao ndio wameza kuwafungulia milango wasanii kutokea Africa kuweza kuzingatiwa kwenye soko lao kwani kila kitu kinaonekana wazi kuwa ni wasanii wenyewe wamepambana from the ground wakipa ushirikiano na mashabiki ambao wanatokea Africa wapo diaspora lakini pia nguvu ya kimuziki kutokana na mabadiliko na teknolojia ambavyo wameza kutumia vizuri. So hiki ndicho ambacho sasa kimeza kuchukua nafasi. Wana kipi cha kusema? Nataka umsikize Echo na ambacho anakisema hapa lakini pia umsikize Whiskey na ukumbuke tu kuna mtandao afu kuna mtandao supervodcom. Mtandao unakupa offer lakini ukijiunga na mtandao supervodcom hii leo unapata jibiza kutosha. Hakuna tozo ukitoa na kuweka pesa kwenye Mpesa kwa kiwango chini ya shilingi 1500 na ukinunua bando kwa Mpesa utarudishwa hadi 15% ya gharama za bando. Upo hapo. Na ndio maana tunasema Vodacom ni zaidi ya mtandao. What is the sound that you're tapping into right now? See the key thing that you say was you got on a plane and you went to Ghana and now you stuck on Afro beats. Um I introduced um Wizkid to America. Um I was the first person to play his song. Me and my wife was on a trip and, and we danced to his song. Um first person to bring Burner Boy uh to the states actually he had a rough rider bandana on when, <laughs> when I, and, and i introduced him on the sh- on the stage uh, when i was playing fela like kuti um people thought i was being too african mm. and that's how ignorant as if that's such the energy was <laughs> at that time you understand but i didn't let that stop me from moving what i'm moving because it is what it is it's all education so we can't be uh, scared of the educational journey of something that sounds different or feels different. So for me traveling the world it's it's a whole like I I I can't wait for people to to, to listen to Ebo Taylor. It's it's scary that you say it's education and cuz over there they know all of our stuff. But we don't know any of them and like I grew up in Maryland so when I moved here I got introduced hey it opened up the door and then when YouTube became super popular That's what did it. Social media and YouTube is what opened the doors for Afrobeat to actually shine. Yeah, cuz YouTube is the biggest uh, platform people consume music on in yeah. Africa, right? It's there in uh, I think it's Audio Mac is there too cuz it doesn't take a lot of bandwidth. Yeah, Audio Mac is there. It's huge in Africa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you were fucking with uh Whiskey in 2010. Yeah. Was he signed to you or were you just I helping him, him out? I signed him in 2008. So you signed Whiskey in 08. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, back in the day. To Con Live or to Convict? No, that's that's Convict Africa. Wow. So how well just explain so him because now he's a he's a global superstar. Oh, he's super 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 global. Uh so you sign him. Um obviously you, he was probably buzzing where he's from. Like how did you guys initially meet? Yep. And what ended well, up what ended up happening? Well, so what happened was when we when I went to Africa after the World Cup, we were looking for ways that we can take the local music and branch it off. Right. So at that time it was the local music was so traditional musically mm-hmm. that it wouldn't break outside of Nigeria, Ghana, anywhere, right? Right. So we started adding like commercialized music and music, like instruments around it. Like we commercialized a lot of it. So it went from Afrobeat to Afro pop. Wow. Basically. Yeah. You follow? So once we did that, then we signed we signed the Whiskey first. Then after that was another group called P Square. Okay. P Square was two twins that came out of Nigeria. They beca- they ended up becoming the poster childs of Africa Afrobeat. at that time yeah. as a group. They were the biggest streaming, selling all of that. But that was all of, of us pushing that point. Oh, wow. Forward. As that went more popular, Whiskey as a solo artist just became bigger and bigger because he had the the whole um fell off vibe like the younger generation swag wow you know so as that started moving everything else started branching as we went as we were signing acts and pushing them over then it was like okay so now that this is huge in africa let's start chopping it and shopping it in america right and that's when all the other records started coming about but we just couldn't get the us labels to catch they didn't get it yet they couldn't. you were ahead of your time yeah they didn't get it you know they didn't it really kind of took the uk hopping on board And then I really feel like played a huge role when Drake did One Dance because Drake was so heavily influenced about what was going on in the UK and Afrobeats. But I feel like One Dance made like um, America okay with the sound. They're like, oh, Drake did. You know what I mean? I feel like labels look at shit in a shallow way like that. Yeah, the labels probably looked at the success of the One Dance with Drake. And then Drake Drake was on Wiz's. Yeah, yeah. Drake already knew how big it was. That's why he did it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Like he already knew what it was. 
So you know? what ended up happening, happening with you and Wiz Kids? So so ultimately, right now, Wiz is no longer signed to us. Okay. But we're still affiliates and work all his records internationally along with Sunday. But well, what point in time did you guys split on the label side? Um, ten years after. Wow. Like 2018. Oh shit. Yeah. That's not. I think I interviewed That's him right in 2018. Yeah, right on the point. I think he was on my show that year. If he was in LA, he was the reason why he got here. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. That's he crazy. That, that was that was his first. Running in the US. Are you still getting a piece of whiskey? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. But, but the, the kind of relationship we have with all of our artists, even after they're no longer on the label, we still bring work. Mm-hmm. We still commission from it. So I always try to keep a, a relationship to where it's not a, a, a boss employee type of you know relationship. It's always been a partnership. Yeah. And oftentimes, there's certain things that we as convict music just do better than anybody else. Mm-hmm. So they always come to us for certain services, and we always be attached to them.